We're going to continue our discussion of modern physics by talking about the photoelectric effect. Now, photoelectric effect is um, a strange thing. Let's say we have a piece of metal. Okay, so this is metal. And we shine a light on it. So this is our flashlight. When the light hits the metal, it causes electrons to be ejected from the metal. So the photoelectron, photoelectric effect is electrons ejected from metal when light is shined on it. And it's tricky how it works. So there are two things that we can change about this light. One is the frequency. And one is the intensity. So the frequency, basically all that is is changing the color of the light <clears throat> or the type of wave that we have. We're going to pretend it's just visible light right now. Intensity is... How bright the light is. Okay. Now, an interesting thing happens. When the frequency goes up, the energy of the electrons increases as well. which is interesting. When the intensity goes up, the number of electrons increases, but their energies all remain the same. So, the way that we... This... These two statements here are evidence of light as a particle. And I'm going to walk you through the reasoning as to why that is. Waves. Waves. Intensity and energy go together. And the frequency of the wave really doesn't have anything to do with the energy. But when we're talking about particles, so for light it's photons, intensity just means number of photons. Photons. How many of those things do I have? That's what intensity is when we talk about particles. So, if the photoelectric effect was due to a wave of light, okay, what we would see is the intensity increase and the electron energy increase. But we don't see that. What we see, so we don't see the intensity of a wave affecting the energy. We see the number of photons affecting, so the intensity of the wave being number of photons affecting how many electrons come off. Frequency, when we traditionally talk about waves, is just sort of a property that goes along with waves. It tells me how many cycles per second. But when we're talking about particles again, especially particles of light, the energy is determined by the frequency. Energy is equal to HF. <clears throat> so, when we turn up the frequency and we see the energy of electrons increasing, we know that it has to have something to do with these particles. That's why the photoelectric effect is evidence of light behaving like a particle. So, taking the photoelectric effect with the diffraction of light, we have to say that light is both 
a wave, and a particle. And there is strong evidence for both. But this is the strongest evidence for light behaving like a particle. <clears throat> so, this is the basics of what the photoelectric effect is. It would be a strange, strange world if all light made all metal eject electrons. So, um, we know that doesn't happen. There's light shining on metal all around you right now and you're not being bombarded by electrons coming off of it. So there's something called a threshold frequency. We'll call it threshold energy. This is the minimum required energy to eject a photon. I'm sorry. The minimum required energy to eject an electron. If my photon of light has something less than the threshold energy, it's not going to make that electron jump off the metal. However, if we have exactly the threshold energy or more than that, it will make the electron leave. So, we're going to look at a formula. It's not a hard one. Energy of the ejected electron is equal to <clears throat> the energy of the photon minus the threshold energy. Okay? Now, <clears throat> And our caveat that goes along with this, if the energy of the electron is negative, it's not ejected. All that means is the energy of our photon has to be bigger than our threshold energy. So, since we'll be talking about the energy of electrons um, normally, We'll say the energy of the electron is equal to energy of the photon, which is going to be Planck's constant H times the frequency of my photon minus the threshold energy, which is going to be Planck's constant H times the threshold frequency. Um, using this, we can again find the energy of the ejected electron. I'm going to go ahead and label these. That's the electron energy. That is the photon energy. And this is the threshold energy. <clears throat> every every metal has its own threshold energy. It's just sort of a property that goes along with that. But again, if we don't exceed the threshold energy, we're not going to have electrons pop out. And any leftover energy after overcoming the, thresh, the threshold energy goes into the energy of the electron. The calculations involved with this involve this formula, and then finding the frequency or finding the wavelength of light that goes along with it. That's it. And so you'll get to practice that a little bit tomorrow.